Hi, I'm Peter Humlick from BigBrush.com. We're going to do a painting. It's a sunset uh, canoe in it. It's along the border waters between Ontario and Minnesota. Uh, the only drawing I've done is a horizontal line. The paper's been soaked and towel dried. And uh, we're going to, uh, I'll explain what I'm doing along the way. Okay, we're going to paint gamboge yellow over the entire piece of paper. If I don't get the yellow in now, I'll never get it again. And we're gonna, other colors are going to mingle along with it. When that's done, we'll glaze in all the other colors. I'll get the yellow in first. Nice, rich puddles. We want these guys to just blow at us. Back and forth, load up more paint. And the two techniques we're using today will be mingling, which is what's going to be happening the first part of it, and the colors are going to dry and we'll glaze over existing colors. Okay, that's got almost all the yellow done. Next step, we're coming in with alizarin crimson to get the orange. A great nice puddle of alizarin crimson. Start from the top, work my way down. Gradually go into a little bit of orange look for us. And just repeat that along the bottom in the water. Glycerin. Okay, now we're coming to cobalt blue. That'll give us a little bit of a purple look. Some cobalt and alizarin. Get some clouds over there. Get a few clouds on the bottom. get some little darker clouds. So I'll come in with a little bit of Prussian blue. A little darker clouds for interest up through here. Repeat that in the shadow. I'll just take a big round brush and I'll just paint a few little clouds in the sky. Okay, over that area, the yellow, we get some orange clouds there. Come back in through here. Okay, that'll do it. Okay, now that, that, that the, the paintings are all the I mean the colors are mingling. We now we just have to let it sit and wait, but let it dry by itself. I want to put the hair dryer too because if we just let it dry naturally, the colors will be a lot more vivid. So it'll take about 10 minutes before the colors dry. We'll get on to the next step of glazing. Okay, I let the painting sit for about uh, oh, 20, 30 minutes. Let the colors mingle. You know, I just finished it off with a blow dryer. And now we're going to start doing the glazing over, over the existing colors here. 
And the thing is that the painting over yellow gives you much, much brighter colors. So I'm going to take burnt sienna, alizarin crimson, and ultramarine blue, and start glazing over the yellow. Okay, that's what we got here. On the left hand side, I'm going to just come maybe half an inch below that horizon line. I never go back in, just keep on overlapping colors. You can see the actually yellow shining through the mix I have here. Maybe one third across. Come down a bit. trees in. The end design is repetition, variation, put a big tree in at the start. A little smaller tree over here. I need a little tall, narrow tree. Keep on working along the way. And further back here to get a bit smaller. Okay, I'm going to let that sit for about maybe five minutes and I'll scrape in some rocks along the bottom of that side here. Just dry a bit before I do the scraping. I'll move to the other to the right hand side. Same colors. And they'll just come a little bit lower because you're a little bit right about here. Just start painting right across. Come in and start painting trees on, on this side. The first guy in over here. trees here and as you further up I get the trees get bigger and bigger and a couple of small guys down here Okay, 
and I'll let those dry, then we'll scrape them, do some scraping. Okay, now we'll scrape in some rocks. Uh, the brush I was using for the trees is called the Lucy Goose Brush um, from Cheap Joe's. It gives you the nice wild look of trees that does not look like little Christmas trees you buy everything being so even. So we'll start on this left hand side coming down and just the blade scraping in. Move to the, the right hand side. down to the corner here. Okay, we'll get that done. And way back in the distance, I'm leaving a little gap in the photograph. The trees go right across and that sort of blocks. It's like coming to a block, uh, to a wall. I want the viewer to get his eyes going way back in the distance. So I'm going to put in lighter trees, a lighter tree line further back. So a combination of Gamboge, a little bit of alizarin. We'll paint in a further tree line way back here in the distance. Even further back, just gamboge. Now he's way back here. Yeah, that lets the eye travel through an opening way back, and rather than in the photograph, it comes here and it just it stops. We want the viewer to get way back in the distance. Okay, now now we're working on the reflection of the trees in the water. Same color combination. Over here, what I do, I leave a little gap between the rock, a little bit of yellow, touch it. It's like the lost and found edge. Leave it, touch it, touch it, leave it. Come down a little bit further. That should probably get come down far enough. And a little, little round brush right under this, just some wiggly lines right under that tree. Wiggly line. This little smaller one here, reflection, that long tall guy. And the one over here is a little taller. Let me repeat the same thing on the right hand side. Pick up some color, leave a little gap, touch it, a little gap. These trees are a little bit, a little bit bigger, so I'll adapt it. Marge reflection, so right under this one here. The way we line, this tall guy. This one over here. Smaller tree. This little guy over here. Yeah, it's just really a mirror. You know, I'll just let that dry a little bit. Then I'll just scrape in some reflection of the rocks down through here. It's all gone, so I'm just going to scrape in. 
I'm getting some rock reflections down through here and back on the other side. And with that little palette knife, now let's get a few birch trees in here too. I've got to let that dry just a little bit more because um, the, the paint's coming back into the little cracks I escaped. Let's let it dry for another book, maybe four or five minutes and get back at it again. Okay, we just let it dry for another maybe three or four minutes. Now I'll start scraping in you know, the odd birch tree in the foreground. Okay, now just move me over to the other side. Get some birches in over here. Let them play with the evergreens. And okay, even a little mat knife I have here. Okay, another tree is a little bit not quite far back, so it'll be the same color, just a little bit lighter than the ones I have here. So maybe right back in here. Another tree line. Okay, then, then we'll work on the canoe. That's how, okay. Okay, we'll have them starting right about here. Okay, paint this guy in. down through here. And very lightly leaving a little ripple in the water from those that paddle he has. little final bit of decorating. We're going to put some, oh, just a little bit of reflection in the bottom, through the bottom here. Like a light, very light purple. Now here's the key. A long, long horizontal stroke. So the three-quarter mark, keep on coming, keep on coming, keep on coming. And right about there we make a U-turn. Head for home. And we repeat one on the other side. Yeah, just for a little bit of interest through here. A little more yellow on this one. The same thing is going to happen in, in this area. Yeah, a little dark line. Put some dark highlights through here. And we're virtually done. Now, I forgot one thing. A little bit of highlights on, the, on those rocks that are 
in there. So I just want to paint in a dark, dark mix of burnt sienna, ultramarine blue, just to highlight these rocks here. So I come right over, so I have a nice hard edge. On top of these rocks. I'll have that. Just maybe I'm throw a few little trees in here too. Same thing on the other side. Okay, so that's it. 